What supplies do I use as a beginner? If you're the watercolor curious of, of this community and you've been maybe watching for a while and you don't know what to use and you really want to try this watercolor thing, this is the video for you. It's time. I get asked this question all the time on TikTok and here in comments and I felt that it was high time, overdue time for me to answer this question. So do you want to paint with me? Because we are going to paint. We're not just going to talk. All right, come on, let's go. So we're going to cover paper, brushes, and paint today. And here's the thing. I'm not going to sit here and tell you you have to use the best paper, the best paint, and the best brushes. Well, actually, they are the best brushes, but <laughs> you know me, I'm biased on that point. Anyway, let's get on with it. Many people will in their beginner process, go to this particular paper first, Canson XL. Let me say this, there's nothing wrong with the paper, but it really is truly a beginner paper and it has some problems. I'm going to look at Canson, I'm going to look at Arches, and we're going to look at Academy. And I'm going to let you guess what my favorite is. So here we go with Canson. I'm painting the same trio of leaves three times across the three different papers. And I will tell you right now, you're going to have to look really close to see the perceptible. Is that a word? Percept? Whatever. To see the differences. You really are. But it's what happens underhand, meaning what it feels like in person when you're painting on these papers that really marks the true difference between them. Canson feels like it has a lot of weight to it and it has a smoother texture, you'll notice, compared to cold press of Arches and Academy. But when you start painting on it, weird things happen that you literally have no control over. And for me, what counts Canson out, even as a beginner paper, is the unpredictability. Because let me tell you, when it comes to seeking joy in this art journey, you need some predictability. Moving on to Academy. And friends, surprise, surprise, this is my favorite. And I can't get enough of it. The price point is so good. It feels very, very much like the Mac Daddy of them all, Arches, underhand. Now, no matter what, if you use a little bit more water on one leaf compared to the other, like you'll see here, you're going to get the splotches. But that's predictable. I got a splotch in this top leaf on Academy because I used more water than I did when I was painting the same leaf on Canson. More on that, but let's go to Arches. Oh wait, we're going to paint the same trio on Arches and you're going to see subtle differences, subtle amazingness from Arches. I can't lie. If I could paint on any paper for the rest of my life and only one and money didn't matter, it would be arches. But here's the thing. It feels so similar. It can take a beating. It doesn't do all the weird stuff unpredictably. You have to kind of force the weird stuff to happen on arches. And it just takes the paint beautifully. You can scrub at it. You can erase. You can do all the things. But friends, I want you to look right now. Look at the left-hand side of your screen and look at the middle. Left-hand side of the screen is Arches, friends, and the middle is Academy. And Academy is literally half the price of Arches. And Academy, for the same block of watercolor paper, is only $10 more than Canson. There you have my absolute favorite. You can check all the info below. If you wanna pick up some Academy, it's all there for you. It will change your life in terms of painting. Okay, moving on to paint. And this is a big shift for me recently. I used to only recommend this palette for beginners. It was affordable and it's still an awesome palette. Don't get me wrong. It's a Japanese watercolor and I, I love them. I mean, look at the color variety and it's like a $36 palette. It's insane. It's insane. But I've since moved on and I have a new favorite for beginners that are looking to level up their palette, but not spend a fortune. This is Mozart's Komarebi. It's still a Japanese watercolor brand. You get 48 colors 
and you get a lot of shimmers, you get some fluorescence. The variety of colors just blows my mind. Now, if you wanna see more about this palette, I actually swatched this palette in this Amazon watercolor palette haul video. Watch this one, it's super fun. Um, Y'all have really liked this one, but if you haven't seen it yet, you need to go see it. I'm gonna bring Academy into play because you now know the cat's out of the bag. I love Academy, it's what I use most. And you know what, let me add here, I use Academy now almost exclusively because I paint so much, friends. It's 100% cotton and it lets me paint as much as I want without feeling like I'm, you know, dipping into my kid's college fund, seriously. But back to paint. So I am going to swatch out this palette for you because I want you to see what's going on here. The incredible saturation of these colors. And I know you might be thinking, Christy, are these light fast. I have found this palette to be just as light fast. I would say it's a high moderate light fastness. It's not going to be, you know, 100 year archival type pigment st stability like you would get from Windsor and Newton Professional Series or Daniel Smith. But I have been painting with Komarebi, uh, experimenting with it for over two years and I have never seen any fading. I have a very light and bright, I have like 12 windows in my studio or something crazy, light and bright, and I've never seen any issue. So if you are painting, this is a beginner journey for you. You're just playing around. Even if you're starting to create artwork and you're scanning it and using it, this is a wonderful palette. Now, if you're starting to paint and sell your artwork, sell the actual originals, I have other recommendations for you. Um, but until then, this palette is just super duper awesome sauce, lots of fun, while still being stable, mind you. It's not going to fade out on you. For those that are curious, I am using the Unshakable Joy three quarter inch flat wash brush from my brush collection. I love swatching with this brush because it forces you to not be too tedious about it. Um, it holds a lot of water, holds a lot of pigment, and you can just make one beautiful big bold stroke in one movement and you're done. So it's a great brush to force you to be really in the moment and immediate with your swatching. And I love, I'm doing kind of this very like organic, um, houndstooth kind of vibe almost. Uh, so super fun. If you haven't tried different ways of swatching, I encourage you to, to give this, a, give this a go. Um, I know I've blown a lot of people's minds with the way that I swatch my new palette. So hopefully, um, hopefully you give it a try. So anyway, friends, we're getting into the fluorescence here. I love the fact this is one of the main reasons that I re now recommend this palette versus the other, um, because this inclusion of fluorescence opens up a whole new world for your painting. Many of you know I am obsessed with fluorescent watercolor. I use it all the time. I don't just use it when I want a bright, bright color. I actually use fluorescence to add zing when I um, when I do mix, because y'all know, watch this video, I don't do a lot of traditional paint mixing. But when I do mix paints, I love to add in fluorescence to give a muddy color kind of a zing. So if you're curious about how I use fluorescence, I would watch this video. You're gonna see a little bit of that in there. So check it out. And then of course, like the Kiritake palette that I used to recommend, this particular palette also features shimmer watercolor. I am not a huge fan of shimmer watercolor only because I scan most of my artwork and you might already know when you scan shimmer watercolor finishes, they kind of do some funky stuff in the final image. So, however, I did actually get my shimmer on this past season and I was really enjoying it. So I love the fact that this palette has um, two or three more actual shimmer colors included. Okay, let's move on to brushes. Now, I'm sure you're probably like, well, she's just gonna rec recommend her set. Well, of course I recommend my set. I love my brushes, I stand behind my brushes. But if you could only have one brush, I would definitely hands down say the quarter inch dagger. That's the art for joy sake brush from my collection. And that brush is available individually on christyrice.com. You can get more info below. But I would definitely recommend a short bristled dagger. So even if you don't want to invest in a new brush, I get it. 
look in your collection and see if you have a dagger brush that has shorter bristles. A longer bristled dagger is going to make you feel very out of control. It's definitely the kind of brush that uh, needs a little bit more learning curve time, but a short bristled dagger like mine has some spring to it, has a stiffness to it, and it gives you a feeling of control, all the while enjoying the variety, the insane variety of brush strokes that you can get from a dagger. And so I'm painting this spray of leaves, super loose, super fresh, just to show you the sheer level, the sheer variety of strokes that you can get out of this one brush. And so I think for beginners, what where it's all at for me, obviously, I'm keeping an eye on affordability for you because I know this is a beginner journey for you. You you know, there are some folks out there, I have a friend of the family and he when he would start a new journey, anything creative or otherwise, he would buy the best of the best and spend thousands of dollars and then in a couple of years, maybe not be into the, into the journey anymore. But I know most of you aren't like that. You don't have endless amounts of funds to spend on a new adventure. And so I want you to have supplies that are going to work well, but that are also very respectfully priced. And that's what all of these supplies do for me and will do for you. So here we are. Here we are, friends. Finally, you've been asking for a long time. Favorite beginner supplies. One, two, three. This is it. All right, friends, if you've had fun with this video, I know it's a short one and you're now really excited. And listen, you might have decided to go out and get these supplies, but I want you to watch this video right now. Use the supplies you have and dig into my absolute favorite uh, techniques for beginner watercolor. These techniques are what I build my entire style of watercolor on, and I cannot wait for you to check them out. So go get it. Happy painting, friends. Until next time.